Thank you so much, Marty. Good afternoon, everyone. I have spent most of my professional life in healthcare, a nurse by training and a public health professional. I am the founder of Caribbean Women's Health Association, an organization that was founded to help reduce health disparities, be a voice for the voiceless, and help people to access health care. I have seen women deliver babies in their homes because they did not have access to health care. I have seen people die unnecessarily because they did not have access to health care. The time has come for us to have a public option now. It is unconscionable that the richest and most powerful country on earth cannot provide basic health care for all of its residents. I believe that health care is a right and not a privilege. And we should not stop. We should not stop until we have a health care system that works for all Americans. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pro President Marty Markowitz and Deputy President. Yvonne Graham, thank you so much that we have our champions here in Brooklyn calling for what we've been calling for, which is a robust public option, if not a single-payer plan. Well, we should move for what we can get, right? Uh, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Manel Silva, who's a, uh, with the National Physicians Alliance of New York, and she's going to have a few words with you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. I'm Dr. Silva, I'm from the National Physicians Alliance, but my day job that I actually get paid for is um, working at the Mount Sinai Adolescent Health Center. Now, I'm a Brooklyn resident, I work up at Mount Sinai, but what's important about that is at least 25% of our patients come from the Brooklyn area, and these are teens and young adults. The reason why we have so many patients coming from the Brooklyn area is because of our broken health care system. The most likely people to be uninsured are 19 to 29 year olds. 30% of 19 to 29 year olds are uninsured. So where are they gonna go for medical care? They need medical care as well. Just to give you an example of how amazingly broken this system is, one of my patients who she was in foster care had aged out. So she was basically, you know, living life on her own without really any adult help. Um, had a full-time job, she had finished college, and she lost her job, another victim of the economic crisis. She was making six dollars too much on unemployment to qualify for Medicaid. Six dollars. Let me put that in under other numbers. She was making seven hundred and fifty-four dollars a month on unemployment. That was six dollars too much for Medicaid. Um, but the biggest problem is that this patient is diabetic. She requires insulin therapy. So she could have ended up in a diabetic coma in the hospital costing thousands and thousands of dollars had she not been able to get access to a free clinic where we were, are able to get medication and, and medical care for her um, through state funding, through some random funding, but this is not the way that the system needs to be. And I get frustrated by this. Physicians constantly are frustrated by the system. I did not go into medicine. I did not spend all this time studying so that I can be dealing with a broken healthcare system, so that I cannot provide the care that my patients deserve and need. That's all I want. I work too hard to be in this system. And this is one of the reasons why, as many of you know, 63% of physicians support the public option. Let me tell you why that's really important. Physicians don't get paid potentially as much as they would than in the private healthcare system. So why is it the majority of us, the overwhelming majority of us support the public option? We've had experiences with Medicare, we've had experiences with Medicaid. They don't, they don't pay uh, us as much as the other systems do, the private system does, but we prefer a public option because we know that our patients get the care that they deserve. They will not be denied for ridiculous things. They will not have to wait before they're able to come to us because they don't have health insurance and then they're incredibly sick and we're treating end stages of a disease rather than preventing it at the beginning. Physicians prefer to be working in a system that's functional where the bottom line is patients, not profits. That's what we want. We're willing, we're willing to have that kind of a system because that's what we believe in. So if physicians 
63%, so just to make this straight, 63% of physicians support the public options and almost 10% of them support uh, a, a single payer plan. So that's 70% of us essentially, over 70% support some form of a public, um, public plan. If we, if we want it and 70 plus percent of Americans want it, why is this not happening? And we applaud the efforts of senators like Senator Schumer in, in being on the forefront supporting a robust public health insurance option and making sure that real health care reform gets passed. And now is really the time where we need to show Senator Schumer that he needs to be even more of a champion for the public option, not only because the, the bills are being merged and we really need to make sure that the public option is in there, but also we're seeing we're seeing alternatives coming up with the public option. As many of you know, right now there's, they're about to introduce a bill that will require states to opt into the public option. We need to tell Senator Schumer, not only, I mean, it's not just an opting out option, the one that he's offering, but we need to make sure that it is in there. The, the basic, everybody is in a public option, that is required. The American people deserve it. The medical profession requires it so that we can do the job that we came into medicine for. Thank you very much. Yeah.